Hey guys, today we're gonna to be installing a Tick Performance Cam in my Junkyard LM4. So this is an aluminum 5.3, and the plan is to fire it up on the ground as it sits, and then install the cam, and then fire it up again all in one go so you guys can hear the difference between stock cam versus Tick Cam. So what we have here is a Tick Performance Elite Series camshaft kit. And in the kit, you'll get your choice of camshaft, uh, valve springs and retainers, push rods, and GM gaskets and hardware. We also opted to get Tick's trunnion upgrade, which we'll talk about a little later. And then the cam we selected was their Street Heat Stage 2 for 5.3s. So the specs are 229, 235 on a 111 plus 2 with a 610, 609 lift split. So now that you've seen the kit and everything we're gonna use, let's fire up the LM4. All right, if you've seen our engine run stand videos, you're already very familiar with this setup, but if you're new, it is very straightforward. We're just using a MSD 6014 box, a Holly 300-132 intake manifold, and a Holly 4160. And then for exhaust, we're running Hooker Blackheart A-body headers to some crappy mufflers. So I've actually already ran this engine. Uh, I even opened it up and inspected it way, uh, right when we got it. So uh, I've played around with the run stand a little bit since it's ran last. And I found that just having this simple gravity feed system makes it actually want to idle on its own. Whereas before we used to rev it and then it would lean out and then do flames. So yeah, this, this should just run and idle completely on its own. We'll run it for a few minutes. I don't want to get it too hot before we pull it all apart. But uh, yeah, I think it's ready to go. Okay, I cannot wait to hear this with the cam in it now. I was like, yeah, it's gonna probably tear up the banner, but I'm like, yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> All right, now it's time to tear into it and uh, put in that monster cam. Yeah, now it's nice and hot for us to work on it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we have the engine somewhat stripped down and the very first thing we're gonna do is remove the crank pulley. LS crank pulleys are notoriously difficult to remove, so we have a handful of tools that we're gonna use, and the primary one being the infamous Chrysler puller. So at O'Reilly's, this is the Evertough 67005, and it looks like this. And when you go into O'Reilly's, you can rent this tool and return it, get your money back, or you can do what we did, which is uh, go in there, have them order a brand new one for you, and then just buy it because if you're anything like us, we work on a ton of LS engines, so this was definitely worth the investment. Secondly, unless your engine is still in the car and connected to a manual transmission, you might need a way to keep the engine from spinning while you're removing the crank bolt. And Travis has the solution right here. So this is the ICT billet um, flywheel hold tool. It replaces the starter and then engages with your flex plate or flywheel to lock everything, bolts in, and then that way you can actually crank on the motor and remove and technically also install the crank bolt because to install it, it needs 240 foot pounds. Okay, crank bolt is loose and the ICT tool worked flawlessly. Coming out, 
And now it's time to use the puller tool. So how this works is you use the longest rod, stick it all the way through. Another thing you can do is actually take an old uh, one-time use crank bolt and cut all of the uh, this head off and just have it be flush so that it, the crank bolt can slip or the crank pulley can slip right past it. But this should work. And then this just slips in. And then these three arms perfectly grab the inside tabs on the balancer. So we'll get that in and then start uh, cranking on it. All right, so now it's all nice and on, uh, 19 millimeter, and then you start cranking on it. Already moving. Okay, come over here, get yeah. to the side. Yeah, so that was with uh, no impact, and you can impact it off even faster. Uh, and we didn't even use an impact to uh, pull the bolt off. We just big breaker bar, and yeah, so that took what, like barely two minutes? Yeah. So, all right, now time for front cover. Sweet tool, worth it. So the rest of this is just gonna be tens and eights. I'm just gonna zap off the timing cover. and dirty. Sweet. So now comes the most tedious part. We're going to be removing all of the rockers and then installing our new valve springs. These push rods are nice and dirty. Yep. Okay, here you go. All right, everything's set up to pull valve springs. I've uh, got my compressor tool on here. I've uh, got compressed air to the cylinder to hold the valves up. The other thing you can do is, especially if it's in a car, because this is, this is definitely a very difficult job to do, especially in a car, is um, just rotate each um, cylinder to be at TDC to keep the valves from falling down. Uh, but out of the car, it's easy to just do the compressed air each time. So yeah, we're gonna hook that up and then we'll pull it out and then we'll come back when one of them's done so we can see the difference between everything. So first two are on, as you can see, pretty big difference between a 660 lift, uh, 475 pound open spring versus stock truck. Then we've got stock crusty valve seal for the new ones, then you got retainers. Yeah, so these retainers that you get in the Elite Series kit, these are their titanium uh, valve spring retainers. They have the little tick logo. And just a quick fact about these, these are the absolute lightest valve spring retainers you can buy from the aftermarket right now. These are uh, 8.2 grams each. So I just thought that was pretty interesting. They are the lightest ones by Tick Performance. All right, so two down, 14 to go. <laughs> all right, after some intense labor, all of the new valve springs are in with all the new hardware. The retainers look super good too. I should have taken the extra step and made all the retainers face all the exact oh same way. Oh my god, there's no way. Yeah, because for what it's worth, putting uh, 475 pound valve springs on a head on a motor is very difficult. So this motor really does not deserve this much lift, you know, with these heads. So you should really also be swapping heads and then put your good valve springs in your new heads or, you know, run less strong valve springs because these are pretty difficult to install. The lighter ones are much easier. Mm -hmm. um, and then in a car, this is, especially if it's like a fourth gen where like the cowl comes up to here, it is extremely difficult. And then also having to get the, um, the airline to each because you have to pull all the plugs and if you have a, if your exhaust manifolds are still on. So yeah, changing, changing very, putting in very heavy valve springs on a car, in a car, on a motor is difficult.
Yeah. Before we pull the cam, we're just gonna spin the motor over twice to push the lifters back up into their plastic trays, and then we're gonna line up the dots. We're just about ready to pull the cam, but we have the perfect opportunity to show you with this short block here, um, how the wooden dowel pin holds up the lifters. So as you can see on the stock lifters, there's a little pocket here. So put the lifter in, shine it in, in, the, uh, in here. So as you can see with no cam inside, the lifter can just fall straight through and ruin your cam swap. But when it's in and in its spot and rolly, and then the dowel pin can slide yeah, just like that. And then now I can push on the lifter. You can see it. Can you see it in there? Yep. Yeah, it cannot drop any further down. So the tray is technically what's supposed to be holding it in, but after mystery mileage, those trays, uh, they're only plastic and they start to span. So yeah, with the dowel pin in, it, it catches on... I don't have another lifter, but it catches on the um, that little ridge and cannot drop any further. But I've even had so like one of the other short blocks. Um, I we pulled it all apart and then never doweled it, and then all the, all the lifters still stayed all in the uh, all in their trays. But and then, yeah, so this is a what five sixteenths I think it is. This yeah. is what a dollar, and you can buy one, cut it in half. But we've just got two really long ones. Yeah, a dollar, but a good safety precaution. So yeah, so worth doing all right so i hear lifters moving around i hope they're all still in there but i guess we'll find out An unfortunate turn of events. Uh, Travis, you want to show them? So basically, uh, doing junkyard engines finally caught up with us. So if you, it's really hard to see. Can you try to get in there? So the trays, see, oh yeah, right there. So the trays are not holding the lifters at all. So there is no way to get them up in their bores and pull the cam out. So we're actually going to put it onto this engine stand flip the engine over so that the lifters then gravity pull the other direction and then swap the cam that way, flip it back over. So this is very ill-advised. As soon as you find this, you should probably just pull your heads, put trays or whatever. But the whole point of this build was just to try to see how much we could pull out of stock heads, stock everything, stock pistons. So what we'll do is get this engine in, get it running, drive it, and then probably plan to pretty immediately pull it back out and really go through it and actually build an aluminum 5.3. Okay, we moved the LM4 to our yellow stand and Travis is just draining the oil out of it. And then we're gonna flip it upside down and get right into the cam removal and then put in the new tick cam. So while the last little bit of oil is draining, Travis, why don't you explain to everyone where the LM4 came from because I wasn't around when you picked this thing up. Okay, so was it like maybe a month or so ago, a little over that? Uh, I went to the yard ER with two friends, you weren't here, and we found a 2003 Trailblazer EXT V8, and that's where we pulled this out of. Um, and it took three of us three hours to get out because the uh, Trailblazers are just so tight. And this one wasn't even all-wheel drive. I've got the uh, all-wheel drive oil pan right here. So this is the oil pan that comes on the GMT 360. So even without all-wheel drive, it still has the pass. And this one was not all-wheel drive, and it still took three people three hours to get out. And we can get out a 6.0 out of a van in like less than an hour with the two of us. So yeah, major pain. Uh, and then this engine, a uh, little backstory. So this LM4 was only available for two years, 2003, 2004. It is completely identical mechanically to an LM7, 96 or 99 to 06. Um, and that it has 706 heads, dish pistons, the 190, 191 cam, and 285 horsepower. And it was, like I said, only two years in the 03 and 04 Trailblazer um, Envoy SSR um, 
the uh, Buick Rainier, all of those. Saab. And then, what's that? Oh, what's Saab 9X, yeah. <laughs> 97X. And then the, um, the uh, in 05, it split and they made the L33, which was in the trucks, which was a high performance version of this. Same, same setup as the Gen 4 motor. And then the LH6, which is the same thing, but with um, active fuel management. So in 05, like I said, it splits into the hot two higher performance engines. But yeah, only 03 and 04 have LM4. And then one thing that's pretty actually interesting about them is in, if you want to come over here, yeah. um, it doesn't have the boss for the dipstick. So this is completely blocked off. You have to drill it because the dipstick hole in this is up in the front of the pan. In 05, they started actually drilling out the boss, but then plugging it. So when we eventually put a pan on it, we'll have to drill it out. And right, so right now, it has no dipstick whatsoever. So I've been measuring oil by how much I put in and you know how much leaks. But, um, cause this was actually, this was supposed to go in the Firebird before duct tape drags, like with this setup. But uh, I wanted our new oil pan to show up so that way we didn't have to rob the one off the LS1 and then have this thing fully sealed. But now that this thing, well, like I said, we don't have the oil pan and now that like, we see the condition that this is in, it really needs to come apart again. That's not happening. So um, we'll leave it with no dipstick for now just cause we'll put as much oil in as we know. And then uh, this whole thing's gonna come apart again. You know, like if we have to pull the bottom end, we'll probably change the oil pump and everything. So yeah, it's all coming, coming apart again. But yeah, that, that's why there's no dipstick. Yeah. It's got a Bluetooth dipstick. And I'm really excited to show you guys the new pan that we have for it. That's going to be pretty cool and trick. So yeah, there's naturally uh, a lot of shortages. So the pan did not get here in time because we have to steal the balancer off of that engine because I don't have another F body balancer, but I really didn't want, I want to keep the oil pan like that. This engine has its oil pan. That engine has that, that oil pan. So I want each of my engines to keep their oil pans. So that way they're not having to trade around. And that way I can properly align them and then um, have them not leak. Because when I'm, I keep swapping these truck pans around and they keep leaking, so. Yeah, it'll be nice for every engine to have its oil pan and then it doesn't need to be traded around anymore. And then we don't have to pull, we have to pull bottom ends apart all the time. We don't, we don't have to put them on this stand to flip them over and then pull the oil out of them while we do it. Yeah. All right, time to uh, remove the cam, I guess. Hey, look at Travis putting down a piece of cardboard. <laughs> a little tiny piece. I need to go get more. Oh, we got some drippage. So, I don't know if you can hear it, but no more lifter clattery. So, theoretically, we should just be able to... There we go. Sweet. And Travis, what's the number one rule when pulling a cam? Oh yeah, don't look at the cam bearings. <laughs> There's a stock cam. So actually here, um, let me grab a light right here, shining in there. It might be cool if you can get the light in there. Oh, so we are checking them. Well, no, we're not going to check the <laughs> You can see all the lifter rollers all in a line. Uh, flashlight's right there. Right there. Let's see if you can get in there. See them all? Should I get directly in? Keep going. There we oh, go. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, so the whole, there we go. You can see them all waiting to drop. <laughs> Perfect, okay. Cool. Okay, we got the timing chain bungeed out of the way and the cam is all lubed up. Here we go. Now we're just gonna slam her in. Go. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah. Here, get the last bit with this. Just smack as hard as you can. <laughs> Ooh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. 
Yay! Okay, so all of this is back on and torqued. Uh, a couple of the new things we actually have is a new front uh, timing cover gasket and a new front seal. Um, but the uh, old timing cover, the seal's totally stuck, so we just grabbed another one off another motor. Uh, O'Reilly's degreased it really quick, and then we're just gonna throw this on with our uh, alignment tool, and then it should be ready to pull off this stand and put back on the run stand. Next, we're installing push rods, and these are 5 16th 80 wall chromoly, and they got the tick performance logo on them, so I think that's cool. So something else we've decided is we're gonna wait on the trunnion upgrade. Uh, we're probably just gonna make a separate video putting them into this engine, because this engine really needs it because it spins 7,000. So I'll show you exactly what that does. So if you look inside a stock rocker, you can see all the needle bearings in the roller. And then what it does is it replaces it with just you know a bushing with the bronze so that at high RPM, these don't come apart and then send pieces through everything. So this engine shouldn't spin 7,000 because the cam's smaller. This one made peak power at 68, so this one really needs it. But it's also uh, recommended with such high valve spring pressures, but this will be good for now because we're just gonna run it then open it back up again and probably do this too. We're probably gonna do this to every engine we open up. And then that one definitely needs it. So we'll make another video putting that in and probably firing that motor up. So it's back on the red cart. Um, we've spun it over a bunch of times, torqued all the rocker arms. Now it's pulley time. So I've got the ICT Villa install tool all the way threaded in and then the pulley's in the oven. And I'm gonna go grab that now. I've got gloves and then we'll slip that on and then bolt it down. Am I supposed to just slip on? No, okay. We could have gone warmer and had it uh, really slip on, but if this doesn't go on easy, we'll experiment with cranking up the heat. Because this is only too hard. Oh yeah, it's going. Okay, we just put five and a half quarts of oil in this thing and we carefully measured because we don't have a dipstick, but uh, Travis is just uh, hooking up the starter and then what we're gonna do is just spin this thing over without the plugs, just so we can um, bring oil up to the top. Yep, so watch the top. Yep. before and it didn't it doesn't always uh i just mostly want to just get it spinning before mm -hmm. and everything's nice and lube so we're probably totally good all right so we're gonna dress this thing up yep turn it all back up and then uh gas and fire yeah Intake manifold is on and so is the exhaust. And now we're just uh, plugging everything in, doing all the electrical. And then this thing is ready to fire up. I am so flipping excited to hear this cam. All right, so this cam has uh, 47 more degrees of overlap. Stock is negative 37, this is positive 10. So no idea what's gonna happen, but hopefully this works to life.
awesome. So I'll have to hook up um, my dirt bike tech. What I was noticing is I don't think it's idling down very far, which is why we really can't hear a lot of lope, but it's also really loud, so it's yeah. pretty hard to tell. So let's put some more fuel in it. And then, um, but yeah, it's, it's idled completely on its own immediately. That was really cool. Yeah. But yeah, it's kind of hard to hear what's going on because it's so loud, <laughs> but it's definitely louder than it was before. All right, we're gonna try a quick open header, see what it sounds like, because I can't really hear too much. And then, yeah, so we close the garage, that's why it's dark. chance it picked it up on audio it just probably both phones are just completely blown out but that sounded really really good that sounded mean all right can we open the garage because i can't breathe in here no we gotta take it <laughs> in. so i want to find the guy that owned that trailblazer mm -hmm. and be like this is your end. like <laughs> that that trailblazer that you totally did not care about and totally neglected yeah. this is its heart now so uh okay yeah that, sound, that sounded much better with the mufflers off <laughs> Hopefully it picked it up though. It sounds really good in person. We'll listen back to this, but wow. <laughs> That's a gnarly cam. Well, it tests 10 degrees. So this is 10 degrees. The El Camino is seven and this is 20. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, when we do the trunnion, we'll have to fire this up. They'll probably sound similar because it's just low, you know, anything lopey open headers sounds the same, but uh, especially with these guys. Well, these would be so loud, we wouldn't be able to hear what we were, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that sounded really good. <laughs> so there you have it. That is the Tick Performance Street Heat Stage 2 for 5.3. So Travis, what do you think this thing makes? So uh, given the 706 heads, 9.5 to 1 compression, hopefully 420, 430. Um, when I originally spec this out, I was theorizing that this is probably the most aggressive cam you could get away with with, like I said, the low compression and only 325 cubic inches. Anything bigger, it would probably push the rev range too high, like well over seven, like, you know, this is 68 for 570. And I wanted to keep the peak numbers around like 65. So, you know, I really want to tear this at some point, more compression, more cubic inch, more, 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 and that'll make more. But yeah, hopefully 420, 430, you know, we might, we might have to give the whole nurse, see what he does. I think he's yeah. made like 460 out of a stock head, stock compression 5.3, mm -hmm. but you know, hopefully around there. So next up for the LM4, we're gonna tear back into it, put in a new oil pump, timing chain and oil pan before it goes into the Firebird. And we'll definitely get that all on camera once all the parts show up. But in the meantime, check out Tick Performance for all of your LS camshaft and valve train needs. <laughs> 